we often take for granted the things that we think we know the things that we see around us we do not question different things at many times this is because many of you might assume that we have always been living our lives this way we have always had such many high rise buildings so many vehicles to commute in different kinds of food items to consume different kinds of dresses to wear but in certain moments of introspection we start posing questions we start posing different kinds of questions that take us to the point of origin we might be compelled to question how did human civilizations begin how did the early humans spend their lives what kind of foods did they eat what kind of houses did they live in and where did these people live and how did we evolve to reach a point where we are today as students of history it is imperative on our part to ask the right questions in fact history as a discipline trains us to ask the right questions instead of taking for granted what we already know now this constitutes the focus of this lesson here we will ask different kinds of questions that will lead us to new discoveries and inferences we will not take for granted what we have already learnt instead we will try to arrive at new inferences so this lesson as you can understand will be devoted to asking questions in the likes of how when where why so let us now begin this lesson and ask a lot of questions to arrive at new answers the first question with which we begin this lesson is that why are deaths important to study history you might have heard many of your friends tell you that they find history very boring because it's all about deaths why is history all about deaths and why do deaths constitute the most essential part of history this is because deaths help us to understand when different events happened in the past let me give you an example in the independent country india we celebrate the independence day on the 15th of august every year india achieved its independence on the 15th of august 1947 from british colonial rule now we do not celebrate the independence day on a day prior to it that is either on the 14th of august or on a day after the 15th of august that is on the 16th of august so what we can understand from this is that it is this particular date that we associate with this event and it is for this reason that history or the study of past takes into account the various dates now dates also help us in the study of history in another kind of way dates help us to situate different events in a chronological order what does this mean now let me tell you about certain events those certain events might be about india attaining its independence about the britishers coming to the indian subcontinent about the mughal empire establishing itself in the subcontinent Now if i tell you these events in a random and haphazard kind of way will you be able to understand without the proper context most definitely not for your better understanding of the events that happened in the past you need to know the chronology or the time frame you need to know that for example the britishers came to the indian subcontinent prior to establishing their rule over this country so this helps you understand when those events happened over a period of time now there's another set of example with which you will be understanding this in greater clarity during the paleolithic age human beings lived as hunter gatherers and they used to use blunt stone tools while during the neolithic age human beings now started forming settlements they were using very sharp tools and during the mesolithic age human beings were using the microliths which were between the blunt tools that were used during the paleolithic age and the sharp tools that were used during the neolithic age 
Now, if I do not give you the proper chronology as in which age followed which one, will you be able to chart this transition? It will be impossible for you to do so. And it is for this reason that we will have to understand the time period in which different events or different ages happened. So, when we have to trace the evolution of human civilization, we will first have to take into account the Paleolithic age which was followed by the Mesolithic age and which eventually was followed by the Neolithic age. So, in this sense we can understand how important deaths are, how important chronology is in the study of history. While we discuss at length the importance and significance of dates in the study of history, there is another very important point that you need to keep in mind. In history, the notions of date and time cannot always be precisely fixed. But just a while ago, we cited the example of Independence Day, which is celebrated on the 15th of August every year. And here we are saying that the notions of time and date cannot always be fixed. Does not this sound very contradictory? Yes, it does, but let me explain this to you so that you can understand this. What do we mean by the absence of precision in the fixing of date and time to various events in history? Now, various events took place in the past which did not happen overnight which were evolutionary in nature, which took place over a long period of time. Consider the evolution of humankind in this regard. Will you be able to tell me on which particular date Homo erectus evolved into Homo sapiens and on which particular date Homo sapiens evolved into Homo sapiens sapiens, which is the modern human being? Will it be possible for you to say so? Most definitely not. Because this evolution of humankind or any evolution or series of changes for that matter happens over a long stretch of time. And these events which happen over a long stretch of time cannot be given a particular date. I have another example in this regard to offer you. Let us see that. Tea is one of the most popular beverages that is consumed by more than 50% of the population in India. But will you be able to tell me the particular date on which human beings in India started drinking tea? You will not be able to say so. Because it is not on one fine morning that all Indians decided to start drinking tea. This also happened over time. People in India were introduced to tea and gradually they developed a liking for this beverage. And over the centuries, this has grown to be one of the most popular beverages in the country. So, what we can understand from this is that things that happen over a period of time, things that are evolutionary in nature cannot be given a precise date and time. So, the point that we just talked about is that events that happen over a period of time cannot be pinpointed. One particular date cannot be associated with those. There are other examples with which you will be able to understand this. Now, in the Indian subcontinent, the Mauryan Empire is considered to be the first pan-regional empire that controlled huge portions of the northern and eastern parts of the Indian subcontinent. And when we study history, we get to know that the Mauryan Empire was established around 321 BCE in the Indian subcontinent. But we do not know the particular date on which this empire came into being in the subcontinent. Now, how do we make sense of this kind of an approximate dating? as in when these things happened approximately. For this we use the concept of circa. What does circa mean? Circa means the approximate date when something happened. 
So when we have to talk about the Mauryan Empire, we will mention that it was in circa 321 BCE, which means that approximately around 321 BCE, this great empire came into being. And here you can see a ship of the East India Company. Now the British East India Company came to the Indian subcontinent for trading purposes in the year 1608. And it was in 1858 that the control over India directly passed into the hands of the British crown. We know these debts for sure. But will you be able to tell me on which particular debt Indians started developing nationalistic sentiments? On which particular date socio-political and cultural changes happened in the landscape of the country? This is not possible to ascertain. This is because these things as we mentioned did happen over a period of time. So the takeaway from this would be that events that happen over a period of time cannot be pinpointed and fixed to a particular date and time. Despite this limitation, we still continue to associate history with dates. Why is it so? Because earlier on history was not written to trace this kind of evolution or series of changes. Earlier on in ancient and medieval times, it were only the court historians who used to write histories. Now these court historians were commissioned by the kings and rulers. So it goes without saying that the court historians wrote things, wrote histories that pertained to those kings or rulers only. Now these court histories that were written in ancient and medieval times talk about the coronation of the rulers, their marriages, the various battles they fought, their deaths. So these were all pertaining to the life and the rule of those rulers. And these were the events that went down in history. And for this reason, the dates on which such and such things happened still continue to be important. And this is the reason why we still associate history with dates. But just a while ago, we talked about how these court historians used to mention only those important and relevant details of the rulers or kings lives in the court histories. But how did these people ascertain the importance of dates? As in how did they understand which date would be of importance to them? This now brings us to a discussion on the focus or the content of histories. Let me give you an example in this regard. Suppose we are studying the history of the Mughal Empire in the Indian subcontinent. And here the date 20th of April 1526 will be very important to us. Why is it so? This is because on the 20th of April 1526, the first battle of Panipat was fought between the first Mughal emperor Babur and Ibrahim Lodi of the Lodi dynasty. And this date marks a crucial turning point in the history of the subcontinent in the sense that after this, the Mughal empire came into power and control over the Indian subcontinent. Now, if we were to study the history of the Roman Empire, would this date 1526 be of any importance to us? Most definitely no. This is because the Roman Empire existed in the continent of Europe hundreds of years prior to 1526. So, what we can infer from this is that the focus of what we are studying, the content of the history that we are studying and discussing helps us ascertain the importance of various dates. To continue this discussion on ascertaining the importance of dates, let us now see what the British historians had to say about the British history in India. How did they ascertain which date is of significance to them? Now the British history in India at the hands of the British historians begins with the first governor 
General Warren Hastings. Now Warren Hastings became the first Governor General of the East India Company in the year 1772. So this marks the year from which the British historians started recording and taking into account the British history in India. And where does this end? This ends with the last Viceroy which was Lord Mountbatten. Now Lord Mountbatten was the Viceroy of India till the year 1947 when India achieved its independence. So from the year 1772 to 1947 would be of importance to the British historians. Now let me ask you a question before knowing more about dates and their importance in the studying of history. Who was the first Governor General of Colonial India? Was it Warren Hastings, Lord Canning, Lord Mountbatten or Lord Curzon? Well, the correct answer is Warren Hastings. He was the first Governor General of Colonial India. Now, the British historians, while they were recording the British history in India, have ascertained which dates are of importance to them. But what did these historians write about? These historians wrote about the British officials' policies, activities and achievements in India. So this was an endless series of many governor generals, many viceroys, many important officials coming to power. They were implementing different policies. They were imposing new rules and taxes. They were undertaking different kinds of activities. They were bagging many achievements in India. And this is all the British historians wrote about. But do you think this is all that was happening in the country at that point of time? Most definitely not. Where were those Indians who were struggling to gain independence from the British rule? Where were those Indians against whom brutal torture was meted out? This is not mentioned in the British historian's history. But why is it so? Whenever we hear the term history, we think that history is the study of past and history will give us access to all events that happened in the past. But it is not so and here we can understand that the British historians wrote only about certain things and not everything. What was the reason behind this? This is because historians write history based on only those events which they want to show. So the British historians when they were writing the British history in India, they did not want to show the world that the British rule was actually oppressive. The British rule discriminated people. The British rule brutally tortured the Indians. This is not something that the British historians wanted to show. They only wanted to glorify and celebrate the rule of the Britishers in India. Which is why the voices of the Indians did not find any space in the histories which were written by the British historians. What we can understand from this is that the perspective or the viewpoint of the historian also plays a very crucial role in the writing and constructing of history. Firstly, it is the historian who gets to ascertain which dates are of importance to him or her. And then it is the historian who also gets to ascertain and construct the history based on his or her perspective, based on his or her preferences. The historians play a major role in the construction of history as we have been talking about. Now the historians also get to periodize or categorize history in accordance with their preferences. Because along with marking the important dates, they also break various events, various phases into separate categories. And these categories are also founded on their preferences. Now this categorization and periodization of history and its relevance is something that we will focus on in our subsequent lesson.
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads. So at Delta Step learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.